For the third year in a row, HTC is kicking off the spring season with a smartphone called the One. And for the third year in a row, it's an aluminum powerhouse built to make the world take notice. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is our hands-on and first look at the HTC One M9. HTC cited the Porsche as inspiration for the M9's industrial design, saying it wanted to strike a balance between the precision look of the M7 and the ergonomic feel of the M8. While the curves of the latter remain, there's definitely more of the M7 in the new phone's feel and hand. The sides and back meet in a sharp corner, a little too sharp as far as my palms are concerned, and they're visually separated by a dual finish construction that leaves the sides chromed and glossy, while the back retains the familiar hairline finish. Fortunately for those who found the M8 too slippery, the M9 sports a more grippy satin coating, and that, combined with the thicker sides, makes it a bit easier to keep hold of. The overall design is very familiar. The new single-piece polycarbonate bezel frames a full HD display of the same size and construction as last year, flanked by improved boom sound speakers top and bottom. Like the M8, the M9 is rated IPX3 for the occasional freshwater splash, and also like the M8, it comes in several colors, with an added emphasis on gold for 2015. Unlike its predecessor, the M9 finally, mercifully moves the power standby key from the top of the phone to the side, and gives it a textured finish to better differentiate it from the volume keys above. It's mounted a little low for my taste, but at least it's not on the out-of-reach top edge anymore. Beneath the casing, the M9 gets a sizable boost in specs, too. A Snapdragon 810 processor backed up by 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and micro SD expansion, all of it powered by a 2840 milliamp hour embedded battery. That hardware stack powers the latest revision of HTC's interface, Sense 7, running atop Android Lollipop. HTC brought us to Barcelona to try out the One M9 for 24 hours, and during that entire period, I found it nearly impossible to trip up the software. Like Sense 6 before it, 7 is responsive to a fault, and while it looks about the same, it comes packing more than a few new features. The most obvious is the Smart Launcher, part of HTC's effort to make the M9 more personal and, in its words, break out of the 80s desktop model of the app drawer. It does this by predicting what apps you're likely to need based on the time of day and your location, and displaying only those titles it thinks might be helpful at the moment. It also brings a dedicated folder for downloads and a suggested apps folder as well. Both smart ideas, but I worry about the potential of the latter to someday push app spam. HTC is also making more use of the lock screen, partnering with Yelp to push restaurant suggestions at mealtimes, and also offering up a curated newsletter once a day called The Morning Bundle. We'll see if all this ends up being more useful or more intrusive in our full review. Probably the most significant upgrade to the new version of Sense is the addition of customization options that make the One M9 the most tweakable HTC phone ever. Trim colors, icon shapes, keyboard look, they can all be customized either manually or via downloaded packages, with themes ranging from the professionally designed to the community sourced. You can manually build your own as well, and if that feels like too much work, you can always let the phone build its own theme by extrapolating colors from a photo. A pretty neat trick, even if it's one we've seen before. And speaking of things we've seen before, HTC has also finally brought a fourth button option to the home key row. Since the M9 is still a pretty tall phone, I use it to trigger the notification tray so I don't have to stretch my thumb as often. Finally, with this year's camera, HTC addresses one of the biggest criticisms of the One M8 and the M7 before it, resolution. The new shooter uses a 20 megapixel sensor capable of 4K video recording with an optics module that protrudes slightly from the phone's casing. Regrettably, despite that protrusion, there's no optical stabilization here, but at least the cover glass is now sapphire, so you're less likely to scratch it. The viewfinder and the whole shooting experience is very familiar, and HTC has shifted its software focus from cutesy tricks to, well, more fun cutesy tricks. I haven't even begun scratching the surface of the possibilities here, and I'm looking forward to mixing the conventional with the absurd as I fully explore the new camera software. For selfies, you've got the ultrapixel sensor back, the same 4 megapixel unit that was formerly on the back of the phone, now at the front and living up to its reputation for lighting things right up in dim environments. By the way, 
All these photos, front and back, were shot using non-final software. So we're not going to pass final judgment on the camera until we get a proper review sample, which we expect soon. For more impressions on everything from call quality to battery life, stay tuned for that full review, coming soon at Pocket Now. The HTC One M9 begins its global rollout in mid-March, and it'll eventually be available on all four U.S. carriers. Pricing is unannounced thus far, but HTC tells us to expect it to fall in line with other flagship smartphones. For more from HTC at MWC 2015, including the new dot view case and the company's first wearable, check the videos above, and make sure you don't miss our continuing coverage. Follow us on the ground in Barcelona, using the links in the description below. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, back soon with more.